Are we recording? <laughs> yeah, we're recording. Go ahead. Hey guys, welcome to the these. Li- so let's do it officially. This is this is my podcast, dude. I want my you to. Is, this is official. I'm doing it. Oh, Sean, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Interrupt me again. Eat your donut. Welcome to these little moments podcast. I'm your host Ryan Cassim, and I'm honored today to be sitting next to the Paisan, the Donna eating Italian swinging. Mr. Videographer of the Year, Rico Incarnati. Enrico Incarnati, Luigi. Um, but yeah, today uh, today Rico and I have gotten together because we're talking about mental health today. Um, something that is both prevalent in our lives and uh, we deal with every day. Um, but what I wanted to get in first is like kind of like, because I, I feel like I could give a little bit of intro to you, but you can give the best intro for yourself. So give a little background to yourself um, while you're eating it. <laughs> Dude, on donut. I'm gonna eat while you talk if that's okay. First of all, Ryan and I got pies uh-huh. and donuts before this, mm-hmm. um, and we're going to eat after this apparently. <laughs> and uh, you know it's a plan. <laughs> I just had an apple raspberry pie. I was gonna share this with you. Dude. But I ate it. <laughs> You didn't even say me a bite. I know, I'm sorry. Dude. I literally ate it. I, I, literally, I just <laughs> passively ate it. I'm genuinely upset. I'm, <laughs> this is not even like scripted. No, this you can. Like... I know, dude. I, I just literally ate that. I literally just dude, ate I that. Dude, I wanted a bite of that. I apologize. I do. Was it good? Well, you the, swallowed it. Dude, the par- farmer's market's open 9 to 5, so we're fine. I'm, whatever, dude. This, um, I could, can I give a review of the donut quick? Go give a review. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of donut is it? Let them know. It's supposed to be an apple cider donut, but it's very cakey. Ooh, I like cakey donuts. Well, cake's fine, but it's um, I'm not really tasting the cider donut. Hang on, this is a cider with cinnamon. Sh- is that what just powder? This is with cinnamon. Powder, sugar. cinnamon. Yours is probably better, more flavor. But no, I'm gonna give it a yeah, I'm gonna give it a 5.7 out of 10. Wow. Yeah, it's a little low, but I have high expectations. I've had really good cider donuts. Got it. And uh, yeah, so why don't you talk? Well, that was a hell. Well, of how a, was your pie? That was a hell. It was really good, by the way. <laughs> um, that was a hell of an intro you gave. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna back that up. Um, my background, um, my name is Enrico Incarnati. Um, I love cannolis. I am 24 years old, living in New York City, and um, videographer to uh, the unicorn himself, Jordan mm. Syatt, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting here with you. you are. And I ate an entire <laughs> apple raspberry pie slice without even giving you some. <laughs> inconsiderate of me. I think you know his character by now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just saying. Um, yeah, so quick background on how Rico and I met. We met almost a year ago at a wow. uh, mm-hmm, at a seminar run by Jordan. Um, I saved you a cannoli. And I didn't save you a slice of... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow. That's so bad. I guess we've uh, come full circle. We've come full circle, guys. <laughs> Right. But um, yeah, so uh, I think we connected on the love of cannolis. Yeah. But since then we kind of built on, I don't, it kind of just happened, like talking about mental health and all that. Um, Rico helped me through my shit. I've somewhat helped Rico through his shit. Um, and we kind of bonded over that. I think that's that's one thing too that like I genuinely appreciate about you. Um, and just for context, like Ryan and I, we are filming this as well. So we have a camera facing us, but we're also sitting right next to each other. Yep. Um, I think that's one thing that I do appreciate about you is like, we've had like hour long phone calls, like even just yeah. shooting the shit about like sports or like mm-hmm. stuff we're going through, like dude, relationship Girls. stuff, yeah. dude, like <laughs> no, but it's just, I, I appreciate it. And like, yeah. just, it's, I think that's very important, you mm-hmm. know? Oh, for sure. I, and, and it's funny cause I haven't, I haven't had like hour long conversations with my friends probably since like middle school, you know? So it's, it's like, um, it's refreshing and it's also just like, it's necessary, dude, especially in these times where dude, things yeah. are so quick and it's people aren't really as, as in touch with anymore so it's 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 grounding it's refreshing so um i kind of want to dive into like uh your mental health whether current and how you kind of got started with it and like your history with mental health almost. um <clears throat> what do you what do you like what do you what do you want to know in terms of i mean i'm i'm open, I'm open for everything i want yeah cool I would say whatever so you're i would to. say i i would say so let me give it a little bit, a little bit of a backstory. Growing mm-hmm. up, um, I played soccer for 14 years, and I would say this is kind of. And the reason I give this is because this kind of shaped who I was as a person. Um, and this is a lot of the reason as to why I got into fitness and just overall health 
and wellness. So I played soccer for 14 years up until varsity year of high school, and then I stopped because I went to I went to school. Um, and also another quick background: I grew up in Chicago, and I went to DePaul University. <clears throat> And I didn't choose to pursue soccer because I just didn't see myself as pursuing it. I just didn't see myself as like, this is going to be something that I'm going to do long term. And that's where I, that's also kind of, I'm going to give more, this sure. is more foreshadowing. Like, that's also where I kind of saw the awareness side in me, mm -hmm. where like, I was very aware that this is not something I'm going to do for long term. Um, so, went to school and I, I originally went for pre med. And not a lot of people know that, like, you know, like, it, it, it's crazy because it's like I went for pre-med and, like, I was so, <laughs> so deep in the medical field. Yeah. But, like, I'm a, I, I do Wanted videography and I fucking yeah. love doing this now. So it's like, what a, what a switch. Mm -hmm. um, but this was also, like, a really hard moment in my life. And I know, like, Gary Vee talks about this where it's like, if there's a moment in your life where you have to have a little bit of friction with your parents to essentially have like a two to three year period where it's a little uncomfortable, but for 80 years of it being like good, instead of resenting them later on, mm -hmm. um, I told my dad, I'm like, I can't do medical field. I, I, I'm doing this for you. Mm -hmm. And like, that's fucking deep. I'm not, I can't yeah. do this, mm -hmm. you know? The awareness at that age. To and say it's that. like, and, and it's just, it, it, it's, it's hard. And this is also something too, like for a lot of college kids probably that like, mm -hmm. if you're doing something that's for, your family and not you, like you're gonna resent them later on. You mm -hmm. will, unless it's something that you truly wanna do, you're gonna resent them. That's just mm -hmm. how I look at it. So having that conversation was tough, but also just having that awareness of like, you know, this is not what I wanna do. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of really, sh this kind of was a, a a moment in my life where I didn't have any sense of direction. Mm -hmm. Like I, 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 I would say defaulted, and I say that in air quotes, um, into a communications major and like, mm -hmm. I'm like, huh, what, what am I actually going to do with this? Yeah. You know, like, like, I, like I, I didn't know. I really yeah. didn't. I just, that's what I defaulted to because I'm like, I, do, I know I don't want to do medical, yep. but like, I'm going to try other stuff. I don't know. And that's when I kind of picked up like a fucking GoPro and started making little videos on YouTube. And like, that's how I got into it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I, I would say, so I want to say sophomore year is when I really started analyzing like anxiety mm -hmm. and like certain levels of depression just because like I would do things to comfort myself when I felt that and, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't really understand like what this anxiety was I just like I just know that like when I felt something I did something like I did something to ease it like a coping. and like yeah like a coping thing and if that was <laughs> and this is funny because um, growing up in Chicago and like uh, going to school in Chicago, I, I went to DePaul and that was like downtown too. So it's funny because uh, on Jackson, so it's, it's a street, it's on Jackson Street. And when I was done with class, I would have like, I would have this anxiety of like not wanting to go back to my room, mm. especially like, especially freshman year, just because I'm like, I don't, I get along with my roommate, mm -hmm. but like, I just don't, I, I, I'm, I'm, I just, I just don't know how to navigate this. Like it just, it just felt very uncomfortable in a sense. And like, I also like my own space too, in a weird way. You know what I mean? Too, yeah. um, but also, just like when I felt that, instead of it was weird. I, I would go walk down Jackson to the lake, mm -hmm. like to Lake Michigan, mm -hmm. and just sit there. And like I would just sit after class. Yeah, after class. Wow. It was like four or five p.m. I would just sit there yeah. for like an hour and just mm -hmm. just to myself. Yeah. Like not not knowing that like wow I'm super anxious about like whatever. It's just that's what calmed me. Mm -hmm. Like I just did that intuitively. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like. It's crazy to think how we do things sometimes without mm. even thinking about it. Like I, I did that without even like, w without it being like a coping mechanism. I just right. did it like that's just what felt good. Right. Um, so it's like kind part of, of your routine. Almost. Yeah, like yeah. doing that. Like like I would sometimes I don't recommend this. I would skip class <laughs> like yeah. and just go sit there and just go sit there because yeah. because sometimes I had anxiety about like one in a face chemistry. Yeah. Because I'm like I don't fucking get it. Mm -hmm. This is stupid to me. Mm -hmm. Like. I don't, I don't get it. And it's like, mm -hmm. I would just go do something else. Like I'd go work out. Yeah. Um, but also I, I, it, it really started ramping up, like I said, sophomore year. So that was like more freshman year, sophomore mm -hmm. year. Um, I lived on my own. This was the first time I actually like lived on my own mm -hmm. and I was still going to school and, uh, it was interesting. Like this is like a deep fucking moment in my life. Like this is like, I, 
started seeing a therapist a little bit mm -hmm. because, again, sophomore year was the time when I kind of made the decision that, like, I don't want to do medical. And it was this gray space of, like, well, what the fuck am I going to do? Um, I was working at my school's gym at the time mm -hmm. as an entrance attendant and um, working out, but, like, not, not really, like, taking it too seriously. I was just kind of, like, going with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, this is, like, my first real kind of battle with, like, of being alone and like feeling alone mm -hmm. like I enjoy living on my own but I also enjoyed isolating myself purposely mm -hmm. yeah and like dude this oh this this is something that like nobody fucking really knows about like I remember this is this is my like really when I had a bad relationship with food when I noticed it was awful mm -hmm. when it's, it's so fucked it's so fucked I would I would literally because on, on our school um, we had like an, an allow and like a I don't say allowance, but like in like a lot, of, like well, not points, food. but like in a lot of amount within our tuition for yep. like money wise for food. <laughs> yep. And like I would literally like go to the our school like bakery thing and like get fucking donuts and pies and stuff. Yeah. And like, no, 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 <laughs> and ice cream. Yeah. I wouldn't eat it though. Uh huh. I'd fucking take it home, sit in my bathtub. I would fucking eat it, and spit it out in the bathtub. Wow. Because really? because I wanted the sense of like I'm eating this, yeah. But like you don't get the fucking deserve it. Wow. You know what I mean, like, when did, and that started just out of nowhere. That's that's yeah. I don't. I, I can't. I can't like pinpoint like when that actually started. But I yeah. remember like I would. It was so fucked. I was so focused on like I'm gonna get as much as I can, mm -hmm. and like make it look like. And, and I, again, I wasn't. I wouldn't post this at all. Like yeah, this, yeah, yeah. It's fucked. But like I would just eat it. Like I would chew it mm -hmm. and spit it out. Like I would just sit, I remember I would sit there for like 20, 30 minutes. Like, yeah. I don't understand, I, I didn't understand what that behavior was. Yeah. I would just do that just because I'm like, it, it, it was like this punishment I was giving myself because I was so fixated on my intermittent fasting relationship yeah. and like everything. And like, this allowed me the sense of control of like, no, you need to be fucking disciplined. So like, yeah. it was like a tease of like, no, you yeah. can have this, but you actually fucking can't, yeah. you know? And it was just like this mind fuck yeah. that I would do. Yeah. And it's just like, I, it, it really didn't, I didn't, it didn't hit me until like later on. And I'm like, wow, what the fuck were you doing? That's interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like, that's crazy. You just remembered that too. And like, this is like a, but also this is getting into something else where it's like, yeah. then the, I think that built up like a, a horrible relationship with my food because mm -hmm. I was so strict on calories, but like, mm -hmm. God forbid if I ate anything outside of that, yeah. like, dude, I would literally chew this donut mm -hmm. and then fucking spit it out in the bathtub and just watch it go down, watch it go down the drain. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm literally... I didn't even think about like I'm wasting my money that's on yep. my card. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that. Right. I'm just I'm like I need to discipline myself. Yeah. Like it's so weird. And that does that become like is that like a random thing or is that just like I, 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 every day type deal or No, like... that wasn't that wasn't necessarily every day. Mm -hmm. I think that was just more so I just, I just did it whenever I got a real urge to want to just like say fuck it and eat mm -hmm. whatever. It's yeah. just like this, no, you can't do that. Right. You know? Um, so that was like, so your sophomore year, basically, so you said this is when your anxiety, all that picked up. Mm -hmm. So you're working in this in the school gym. Mm -hmm. um, you said you felt alone, which, which is interesting because a lot, of, it's, a lot of people feel alone even though we're surrounded by hundreds of thousands of people, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so it just, I guess that just means at that point in your college life, you didn't really have someone to talk to per se or someone close right I did mm -hmm. and my girlfriend at the time mm -hmm. I, I I I had her mm -hmm. but like it's weird this is like all coming at me right now like yeah. I'm feeling all this is yeah. like weird I'm not like so, I'm not like gonna cry but it's yeah. like it's just like I get like really deja vu mm -hmm. the way that I handled that and I I talked to like a therapist about this later on um is like, I put a lot on her mm. at the time without really knowing it. Um, and like, that's not a healthy way to yeah. do things. And like, the person where I am now is completely right. fucking different than where I was. And it's like, I'm not ashamed of who I was. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like this growth. Yeah. Um, and like there were times where I felt like I just I didn't want to I didn't want to like say anything to her or whatever. The only reason is yeah. because like we lived pretty close to each other and like mm -hmm. we went to the same school, so it's like mm -hmm. it was in terms of ease of access of like being able to talk to somebody. Right. Um, 
and like my dad my dad didn't really understand my mom didn't really get it mm-hmm. and like she's going through her own shit so it's like yeah. this it's tough yeah. um so it's like that's where i kind of felt like isolated because i'm like yeah. fuck i can't really talk to my dad about it nor does he understand i don't want to i don't want to make him understand i don't want to try to make him understand because mm-hmm. it's like this waste of time i felt yeah and uh i find that so interesting because it's like uh it's like think of like the closest person you know and you really don't know like like that's a huge part of your life that a lot of people didn't even know about like mm-hmm. your dad didn't even know about like all that um what uh what kind of sparked you like talk about want like the the steps that went into wanting to go to therapy or like the thoughts of starting therapy i think my first suicide attempt so that's i didn't even know that yeah, yeah. That, that's why i'm like that's why i'm like building all this is mm-hmm. because like that's when i literally like was I, I remember like standing in it was before like my girlfriend at the time it was before her birthday like it was dude I, it's like it's so weird to talk about it because it's just like i did it just because i'm like i just want to see Mm. Like, I, I just want to know that I have the power to do this. Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah, you know what I mean? That. Yeah. And it's like, I just, I just want to know that, like, I actually have the fucking power to do this. Mm-hmm. Because, I li- because, again, like I said, I literally felt like I was in this gray space of, like, not knowing what to do. I felt like my father just looked at me differently. You know, like, like ima- imagine your parent telling everyone that they know that you're going to be a doctor. Yep. Like, everybody that they know. Yep. Your family. Like, everybody in my family, like, knew I was mapped out to be a doctor. Like, my dad yeah. picked the school I was going to go to in California, mm-hmm. like, when, like, when I was done. And it's like, to have this whole change of course, mm-hmm. and again, yes, I had the awareness, but then I didn't, I didn't realize, I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, wait, now what does everybody else think of me? Mm-hmm. Like, am I like this failure now? Yeah. I'm like, am I not a, am I less of a brother? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't want to be here mm-hmm. I, like that, that that's yeah. literally what it came down to it's just like does my girlfriend look at me differently does her parents look at me differently does like mm-hmm. like it's just and i'm like i i i, I could easily just not be here mm-hmm. and it's like I, that's why i have this tattoo strength is because i literally took a fucking knife and like just right there wow. and like i just that that's why i have so on my um like i said we're filming this mm-hmm. um but on my on my inner wrist, I have the word forza, which means strength in Italian, and that's where I attempted suicide the first mm-hmm. time. And it's like <clears throat> I remember going to get the tattoo, and like it was three days after I tried it. Like yeah. there was like it was pretty deep, and like the lady's like, oh, this, "Is this like a is this like a new cut?" I'm like, "Yeah, just something happened." She, it's so weird. I I think she knew. Mm-hmm. kind of what was going on in a sense and I'm like yeah I don't I don't I don't know um, yeah. and like <clears throat> that's kind of that's kind of what was like fucked up because I kind of wanted to get the tattoo as like a cover up yeah I wanted to get story. it to, to cover up you know and I'm like I, yeah it was just that was like a that was when I realized I'm like dude you gotta go see somebody because yeah. you can't keep putting this on yourself yeah. and the people that you love yeah you know and I think the irony is like you got that to cover it up, but now it's it's open. You're open about it, <laughs> right? Right. That's the cool part. Isn't about that it. cool? Yeah. Um, all right. So you started. So no, on... Yep. So to continue with that, um, that's when I had started therapy, and what I am super thankful for, and also another big thing is, if you're in school, like college or anything, what's what's super undervalued, and I didn't realize the value of this is therapy like like not not just therapy as, as a whole but like therapy that's provided by your school because literally i went to i i was able to go to therapy a, once a week for five bucks Dirty. for five yeah. bucks i didn't realize the value of that mm-hmm. like now if you want to go to therapy sessions like what 150 175 Maybe sometimes insurance yeah, yeah but like five bucks yeah i didn't i didn't like conceptualize that right. I'm like I'm like oh like i gotta go kind of thing so like sometimes it'll get like that yeah because uh, I would get bothered by, like, I would get bothered by myself because I'm very hard on myself in a mm-hmm. sense of, like, dude, why can't you handle this? Because yeah. I was raised to be, like, tough mm-hmm. and not fucking let anything get to you mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, anyways, that's when I wanted to go see a therapist because I'm, like, I, 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 I just I want to I wanna try. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I just Googled it on my own. And what was, what was the real hard part was where the therapy office was, 
it was on the same floor as where a lot of classes were happening in the downtown location. So I what I I was I was kind of embarrassed to go the first time. Mm-hmm. I like like and this is this is funny cuz like I'm a big advocate of it, but I was embarrassed to go the mm-hmm. first time. And it's it's crazy because I know that some I, I knew the class schedules when they would get out and it was like a therapy office mm-hmm. and like I waited for everybody to leave. Oh, well. And I pretended like I was going into class or something and then like I would make sure literally nobody was in the hall. And just go in, like yeah. even even if they didn't know who I was. Right. But like the way I looked at it was like, oh, they'll probably see me because I work right. at the gym. Right. You know what I mean? And like, again, it's just that stigma that I created in my head of yep. like I don't want anybody to think anything else yep. or different. So it's like I I went in and mm-hmm. I remember like I had to fill out stuff on like the computer, um, and like I I saw a therapist I think that day. Like we just had like a consultation and then we saw yeah. each other once a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and I continued that for. The rest of the year, I think this was like, so that was that was in February, and school ended in June. So I continued up until May, which is when she relocated to a different state. My oh, therapist. Wow. So like that was tough for me. That is tough. That was super tough for me because I'm like, but wait, I have a really good connection with you. Like, yeah. why are you leaving? Yeah. You know, and it's that like sucks. that. Ha- that was hard for me. Yeah. Because I'm like, fuck, now I'm gonna be back alone. Yeah. You know. Well, you get comfortable with someone. You're like so vulnerable. And open. Well, not even just that, but like you know so much about me. Yeah. And it's like, who, how can I do that with someone else? Yeah, start over, basically. You know? Yeah. So that's kind of like what initially started it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing, man. Wow. And then, uh, so, coming out of all of that, mm-hmm. what was like, so therapy obviously helped you. What was like, what were the things that you had to put into place to sort of create that framework that you have now? Um, what do you mean? Like as that. far as so therapy helped you but what what do you do like so say someone else is going to the same thing like therapy is a great way to help what are some things that you do daily that kind of help you with your mental health or what was like a groundbreaking thing in addition to therapy um that helped you with that catalyst to help like a better mindset <clears throat> i would say the the biggest thing and like i said from the beginning was just like developing a sense of awareness mm-hmm. and just over I don't want to say over communicating, but like over um, going over the top on it, and mm-hmm. just being super aware of like different things. Like, okay, what's causing certain things of anxiety? Like, mm-hmm. what's causing you to feel a certain like way? Like, what's causing you to feel a depressive state? And like, there was a lot of different aspects within that. And um, like, a major thing was my mom. Mm-hmm. Like. A major thing was like my mom she put a lot on me and I realized that she made me feel sad like she made me feel like depressed and like just down Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like that's one thing so it's like I realized I'm like okay do I have control over that situation in terms of like can I change her can I change her thoughts no I can't like she's she's gonna be the person she is but like I have the way I have the control of understanding that hey you know what what she's going through and what her I don't want to say her issues, but like what what her things that she puts on me is not my fault, mm. and like don't put that blame on yourself. Right. You know what I mean, like there's only so much you can do to help someone, but like yeah. it's just you can't put the blame on yourself in that sense. Yeah. Um, and like my father was going through like a rough time too mm-hmm. at that with um, his current ex-wife, and uh, it's just like understanding what do you really have control over, and like now like the person i am now like i'll understand and like that's why i'm so fucking thankful like having someone like jordan because like like even if i'm anxious about something like it goes away like that Mm -hmm. and it's just like wow you know when in the past it would have it would have it would have been this story or this like made up fucking thing in my head for like days Mm -hmm. and now it's like within minutes it's gone Mm -hmm. and it's i'm on to the next thing yeah and it's like that's so fucking cool to me that's huge you know what i mean and it's like I think it's just what's important in terms of like building a framework is just understanding like what you have control over and what you don't because I think a lot of anxiety comes from projecting the future Mm -hmm. and making up this this story of what's to come when you have no idea what's to come Mm -hmm. it's like and and I think a lot of depression comes from stuff that we harp on in the past and like stuff that we like look back on that like we wish we could have changed and like maybe a form of regret in a sense but like Ultimately, it's where are you right now? What do you have complete control over? And like, 
I think it's a good thing to think about the future, but also not letting it dictate what you do, because then you just in the in the present, like you lose sight of what you're doing mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. That's so true. Um, so the reason I call it I call it these little moments podcast is because like I I feel like for me like life is built on these little moments that lead to big changes or bigger moments. Mm-hmm. So what would you say is like the the little moment that kind of sparked your biggest change? Um, huh, that's a good question. Honestly, when, uh, fuck, this is tough, dude. Asking the hard questions here. Asking the hard, <laughs> asking the hard questions. I'm gonna eat my donut while you think. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead. Um, there's so many, like, little moments. Oh, yeah. Like, I can't, I, I can't just pick one. Mm-hmm. Um, pick a I'll, I'll, I'll pick a really good one, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's when my girlfriend at the time, like, completely broke up. Mm-hmm. Because I really was like, fuck, now I'm, like, alone. You know? <clears throat> but, like, I didn't look at it as, fuck, now I'm never going to find anyone. Now it's like, no, you really need to work on you. Mm-hmm. And, like, not try to have, not try to, you know, it's funny. Like, when I, when I look like if, if you see it, I just picked this up like whenever I look at things it's because I'm trying to like I'm a very visual person yeah. and I see things yeah. like in the past that have happened so mm-hmm. I'm trying to I like I recall it yeah. it's that's why I look at like it's it's funny like that um, but realizing that like you can't depend on someone else for your happiness mm-hmm. was the biggest fucking thing mm-hmm. and like that would be a little moment mm-hmm. that I translate into my life now mm-hmm. where it's like I'm happy. Yeah. Like I am ge- like right now, I am genuinely the happiest I've ever been in my life. Mm-hmm. And it's like no matter what happens, no matter no matter anything, I will always be happy because I know I have framework to make me happy. Like mm-hmm. if God, I don't even know. Um if if I if I lost my apartment mm-hmm. for some reason, I don't know, or if I if my laptop shattered, mm-hmm. like that's a that's a little that's that's what I would say like another moment of something that like just completely that because that's a big thing in my life mm-hmm. i'd still be happy yeah because it's just like okay cool i can yeah. get a new one yeah it's like i know fuck it's gonna be three thousand dollars but like mm-hmm. it's okay like mm-hmm. it's okay it's like building a framework for what makes you happy and mm-hmm. understanding that you have to depend on you for yeah. happiness um before you can give it to someone else mm-hmm. like i like i'm in a relationship now um I'm the happiest I've ever been in my rela- in like the relationship I have now. Like mm-hmm. the relationship that I'm in now with my girlfriend, like I would say I'm trying to I'm trying to articulate this properly. I would say I am years beyond the person I was mm. in my past relationship. And I think this is this is important because it's like the last relationship doesn't translate to this relationship. That was, the, I remember you were going through that. That's huge. That's a huge. The last relationship is is not like okay, whatever I learned in this relationship, I'm gonna have to just apply it to this new yeah. one. No, no, no. Because the person I'm with now is a completely new person, yep. and I have to treat her as that, right? Not as my ex girlfriend, right. like or your ex boyfriend. You don't base your new relationship off of the framework that you once knew. No, you apply. Yes, okay. I mean, I think there are certain things that you can apply, mm-hmm. like. For example, not depending on another person for your happiness. Mm-hmm. I can I can apply that now, mm-hmm. and like I can apply my level of happiness, and right. like I can give that to her. Right. But like, worst comes to worst, we're not together. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll be happy. Yeah. But it's just like I can give more of my happiness to right. her, yeah. and like, she can also be happy with herself, and then the relationship can be happy. We're back. We're back, folks. We're back on these little moments podcast with your host Ryan Castle with my special guest, special guest Enrico. Luigi and Canati. I love how you just add <laughs> the Luigi unnecessary. That's because you don't have a middle name. I know, I don't. Fun fact, yeah, I don't have a middle name. And that blows, so, I always blows my mind. People are like, wait, yeah. you don't have a middle name? It's missing. I'm like, no. It's missing. We're looking for it. Don't worry. In the meantime, interim Luigi. Yeah, um, now we're actually going to do a little role reversal here. Oh, a little role reversal. And uh, Ryan's going to talk about his story with mental health. Yeah. And um, and again, that's like why you and I connected. And it, yeah. like you said, like you said before, it's so interesting how we even connected on it. <laughs> it is like, weird. It's it's just just, it's happened. weird. Yeah, it's just like 
It just happened. You see, guys, this is why you get cannolis and you, <laughs> and you save them and you don't eat this. the damn pie slice like I do because you never know what you'll connect on, you know? I just like the same between breaks. I gave Rico a slice of my blueberry pie. <laughs> Can't confirm he did and it was delightful. It was um, quite good. So talk about your story with mental health. Like, why are you passionate about it? Why, yeah. like, I want to hear about it. So mine, mine started, uh, mine started my senior year in high school. Um, so kind of to give you a quick story, my parents separated uh, in August of 2009. Uh, we were on a trip to Aruba and uh, if, if something felt weird, but I was like an oblivious kid who was just like, eh, you know, maybe my parents were just acting weird. Um, but I remember just on the trip, I think, I forget if my sister and my mom, someone told me, but um, basically they're just like, your dad and I are separating, like, um, kind of just fell out of love and, with each other, blah, 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 um, which completely, like, it's one of those moments in life where you just get knocked out, because I was just, like, completely caught off guard. I was yeah. like, I have no idea how to handle that, all that. So we get back, um, from the trip, and I remember August 16th, 2009, my dad moved out of the house, which was a surreal moment, because I will never, like, I could see it right now, I will never forget it, like, my dad leaving, um, and my mom crying, and, like, it was just so bizarre, and, like, uh, I, that was, like, my first bout with mental health, because I'm very, <clears throat> and I get it from my dad, I'm very, I internalize a lot of my emotions, and I don't speak them out loud. Like I would try not to cry. I, it's very hard for me to cry in front of people. Um, not so much nowadays, but uh, back then, like I, you wouldn't catch me crying in front of you. Um, so flash forward senior year, uh, you know, it's, it's hard. My mom is in the house because she's going out uh, on dates or she, you know, and I'm home alone often. Yeah. Uh, or when my dad would come home, he, they would be screaming at each other, and I'd just be like absorbing everything. Um, so it's like it was very toxic. In the meantime, like that's my senior year. You know, you're supposed to have a senior year. Like you know, you, you want it to be like the best time before you leave high school. But um, you know, I'm trying to play football at the time, and uh, my dad would come to my games drunk sometimes, uh, which was is just crazy. It's just it's it was crazy. Um, so. Essentially, it didn't really all hit me until uh, I would say when my girlfriend at the time, my senior year, dumped me. So she dumped me, I want to say in like April, so like a month before prom, <laughs> um, my senior prom. Fuck. Um, and I just remember like, I as soon as it happened, I was supposed to have a math test the next period. She dumps me like in the library <laughs> before my math test. And I remember going to the bathroom just like crying, like crying hysterically, like, and then going to the, the I had no idea how I did that test, but <laughs> I just remember going to, taking the test, whatever. Um, and then I just remember going home and like for the next few days, I would just like break down in my room, like by myself. Like obviously I'm not confiding in my mom because like it's hard for me to talk to my mom. She's going yeah. through her shit. Yeah. Um, you know, she's, she's not there often. Uh, so I just remember one day, uh, you know, I, I had it in my head. I was like, if I don't do something in this moment, there won't be other moments. And that was mm -hmm. like a crazy, like, I'm getting chills when I say that, but that was like a crazy moment. Mm -hmm. So I remember, I remember talking to my mom and say, mom, like, I, I didn't say I want to. I said, I need to go to therapy. Fuck yeah. Um, I had no prior experience with therapy at that time, but I was like, I need to go to therapy. So that was my first, um, experience with it, with therapy um and it obviously first time I was like super nervous like incredibly awkward like the first session <laughs> like the guy's lucky to like find out what my name is like because i'm very closed off and like sharing emotions is mm -hmm. is hard mm -hmm. um and by the end of that therapy session like i was a fucking open book man like it was so groundbreaking for me because i was all of a sudden like very vulnerable and like I and I I'm gonna use this again but it's it's just like a it's like a house with vines covered on it and you literally rip the vines off and um, you could see what it looks like um, so went to therapy my senior year then I went to college um, 
college kind of like, you know, I didn't go back to therapy, um, but I felt like I was in a good place. Uh, you know, obviously things are still going on, but you know, that's when I started to have bouts of anxiety and, and I never realized this until I learned what anxiety was and like to find out that I actually had, I was an anxious person. But there'd be times where, uh, you know, I thought I had asthma, but I would literally just be having panic attacks. Like I'd be shortness of breath, I would go to the walk-ins and they'd give me like, they thought I had sports induced asthma, they'd give me like an inhaler or something like that. Um, but looking back on it, it, it was anxiety. All that was just built up, built up, built up, and it affected me physically. Um, so I graduated college and um, pretty much from there on, I uh, didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do, became a personal trainer. Uh, I uh, fell in love with music and that was like a huge, huge thing for me as far as expressing my emotions. Um, which is funny because like uh, my mom would be listening to my album and she'd be like, is this about the divorce? Or like, is this about your grandfather? Wow. Or something like that. And like, I had never thought about it. Like I just wrote the lyrics, like sang it and I'm just like, yeah, I guess it is. Like, Damn. you know, it's just like, it's amazing like what will come out of you um, when you write or like it's coming from a creative place. But uh, yeah, so like my whole album was like about the death of my grandfather or um, uh, my parents' relationship. And then uh, fast forward to that, I had a girlfriend. Fast forward after that, we broke up. Um, and then for the next couple of years, this is kind of where uh, mental health came back as far as um, being important in my life because the next couple of years, I call that uh, I call that like zombie mode. So basically, I basically I I was just going through the motions. Like a day days would pass and like. You know, that it was just it. I wasn't thinking really. I was just doing, like going, going to work, going home, blah, 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 blah. Like fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Um, until one day, I remember sitting on my porch and I, and I was just like, I, was, I felt physically depressed, mentally depressed. Like, I just felt like I wasn't in a good headspace. Um, I felt a lot of anxiety, which I never really had felt so much before mm -hmm. um, as far as physically feeling it and just like mentally my I couldn't think straight um, and I just remember I made a post on Instagram and it was uh, <clears throat> it was a post of me and I think I don't know if I was smiling or whatnot but it was basically like you you can't tell what someone's going through especially if they always put on a smile yeah. um, and that's me like I you would have no clue like what I'd be going through because I'm always like people would say like and it's a crazy thing but like I'm always laughing like he's always smiling blah 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 but like on the inside like I had some dark dark thoughts like similar to I mean I never never attempted suicide or anything like that but similar to how you said you were thinking like I would I would look at a telephone pole when I was driving I'd be like oh I could drive into that right now you know which is like a fucking dark yeah. thought and I'd be like well I wonder who would miss me or like who yeah. like what would people say at my funeral you know stuff like that it's like a, it's a very dark place to be in um, I don't think it's a bad thing but like it's a very dark place to be in because it's um, yeah it's just it's crazy so that was my thought and then uh, <clears throat> being in therapy prior to that I knew the place that I was in that I needed to go back and I had been thinking that for a couple years um, especially like after the death of my grandfather, like again, I internalized that, like huge person in my life. Um, coming home, you know, never redealing with my parents' divorce, all that. Um, my breakup with my ex-girlfriend. So it kind of just, it all bought up and that's why I was in zombie mode. And then I finally said, you know what? In that moment, like this is my little moment um, where I knew like this changed my life. I said, if I don't do something now, I won't be, I won't, I won't be around later, right? Like that was my moment where I was like, I need to do something for my mental health because it's now or never, basically. Um, so I asked my mom um, for a therapist recommendation. You know, she had, she goes to therapy every now and then. So it's not like uh, therapy was shunned upon in my family, which I think is really good. Mm -hmm. um, so she recommended a therapist, and I have been going to a therapist consistently for 
probably about a year and a half now. Fuck yeah. Um, which is kind of, uh, it's amazing. So like I started going like a couple times a week. Uh, and then, you know, once she kind of felt like I was in a really good place, I just started going once a month, which is, uh, wow. for me, it's amazing because it's, I still get nervous every time I go, which I think is normal. Um, because you're literally just going to talk about yourself and like that's the scariest fucking thing <laughs> like I think a lot of people don't realize it's like when you go just to talk about yourself and that like this is what I like to do it's like it's like, <laughs> no, it's like this is how I fucking feel yeah, like yeah, this yeah, is yeah. like this is how my emotions feel like this is what bothers me it's like why am I afraid to do this all right let's talk about that it's like that's the scariest fucking thing and like that's what people get stuck because they never talk about it, and it's like it, that's the, that's scarier than than talking about it. Yeah. Never talking about it is scarier than than talking about it. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of like my bout with like mental health and like that history with it, which is fucking um, it's a crazy journey. It's what's what's crazy is that like that that what you said where it's like you're in the car and like you see like a telephone pole, mm-hmm. and it's just like e- even and and again not to get like super dark, but it's just like you. I, I had those moments of like, wow, I could actually just like, I'm in, I have a car right now. I'm in the power of like, I, I can end my life. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I look at it as if that, that voice that's telling you not to, mm-hmm. is just like, man, you know what? Like, I need to be here. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, it's probably fucking awful right now and it sucks. Mm-hmm. It's just, I'm super in my head, but it's just like, yeah, it's just that that that's something that like I I wish as I was younger like I would just tell myself like dude, like if if you could tell yourself at like twenty four you're gonna be okay, mm-hmm. like but you don't think of that you don't think yeah. of like at twenty one like yeah. three years from now is a long time yeah. and it's like fucking three minutes it feels like forever sometimes because mm-hmm. it's like fuck I just want to you know yeah um would you would you say and since we we both have parents that have been divorced mm-hmm. um w- so what was that like 18, 17, 18? yeah. So my parents got divorced when I was two. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I've also seen my dad go through another divorce with my former stepmother, mm-hmm. um, and that was awful. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have no knowledge, really, of like how my mother and father were getting divorced, mm-hmm. and that was. It, I, I think it literally plays out later in life. You kind of sure. realize stuff, but like, would you say that kids who have I, again, I'm not. I'm not saying being the victim of a mm-hmm. divorce, but who have gone through a divorce. Um, do you think that they have a harder time being in a relationship with someone because they don't mm-hmm. have a good model of what is a good relationship? That's yeah. That's the fucking question because um, that's something I'm. I'm honestly still dealing with today because, and it's so funny you say that because, um, yes. I mean, obviously every case is different, sure, but. For me personally, it, it has been it has been an issue because I've always and I'll look to like my clients who are married or whatnot, and I'm always looking to see an ex- just an example, like a little example of what a good relationship will be, like something that lasts, right? And yeah. that's like, especially in, in this day and age when like divorce rate is so high and blah blah blah, but like you just want to see something good that says like okay, it, it's possible. Like, you know yeah um because yeah growing up like i said when when my parents told me they were separating it hit me like a bag of bricks i was just like what what do you mean you're getting divorced but like growing up i fucking knew it wasn't a healthy relationship you know like um whether they're arguing about money or or you know like stupid little things or or big things you know it's like you see that as a kid but you don't understand what the concept of like a what good relationship is at that point you know um so yeah, I definitely think it can affect somebody's ability to be vulnerable and to allow someone in your life um, to have a relationship with. Why, why do you think you struggle with that? Uh, I think I struggle with that just because I think one at the time too, it's like, you know, it, it caught me so off guard of, of like a good relationship, but like I think and always in my mind I've been searching for like what a good example is, even though I know I can set that example right um uh and i think you know i might possibly some use that as an excuse too right you know um but i think i think i struggle just because that's like at such a young age it's like imprinted on you you know 
and uh, it's 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 tough to get that that print off of you um, and to make your own. You know, especially you see like like I'll have clients who are married and like I'll be training someone and they're like, yeah, I was I went to to a thing this weekend and cheated my wife and they're like totally okay with it. I'm just like. No, like I totally had like a different vision of you and like blah blah blah, you know. Interesting. And it's just like for me, it's like it's like a little bit of hope is is scraped away every time. But like, um, but then like for instance, like um, at so inner circle shout out, but at the retreat, um, Tony and his wife, right? Like when he was talking about how he loved his wife, like dude, I was like tearing up. Like, she got I so was, emotional too. I dude, I was legit tearing up because that that was the first time I've seen like a relationship where I'm like, yes, I'm like that. It's so much. It's so possible to have like a good relationship and to actively be in love with your partner for years, right? Like forever. Um, so that was like a really powerful thing for me. Do you think if you found someone who went through divorce as well, mm -hmm. that it would almost like you would get you 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 would kind of you would. So here's what I'm trying to get at. Like, mm -hmm. if you're if you're dating someone that has gone through similar things as you, do you think you would align more, or do you think it would be like more disagreements and like you would you you would because you guys let's say I'm just saying like because yeah. you guys don't have good examples. Let's say would you think it'd be harder to get along or be or you'd be like no, I know what I don't want and mm -hmm. we know what we don't want. Yeah. Like, like. This is on the outside. We're on the inside. Yeah, you know what I mean, kind of thing. I think I think what you just said is is. I mean, obviously, if you have someone who comes from a family who's still together and it's like a good relationship, that's awesome. And like they could bring that to your relationship, add it to it. But I think also like if you have someone with similar experiences, like they just get it, yeah. right? And like like you said, like they know what not to do or like what a bad relationship looks like or how it leads to like a divorce, right? So mm -hmm. I I think both are awesome to bring to the party um and i think yeah you, you could you definitely align more with someone who's been through shit with you right like someone who's who's attempted suicide like you would definitely resonate with that right so i think it, it definitely would help it, i don't i don't see it as a crutch i would say um yeah no not at all I, I i don't and again i don't i don't see as like anyone who has like baggage yeah we, we all got fucking baggage yeah it's just like i think people who have the same baggage i don't view that as like oh like you're you have a lot of shit yeah because i have the exact same fucking shit yeah and it's like i don't view that as anything different or bad or negative and it's just like if anything i look at that as like oh my god you understand yeah exactly what not again context is totally different but you understand similar patterns and paths and mm -hmm. like you know kind of what you're not looking for and like I know what I'm not looking for, but we also know what we are looking for, mm -hmm. and it's like, that's fucking cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, damn. I love that, dude. That was great. Man. I love that, That's cool. And always, and I should say this, it always, you always feel better when you talk about that shit. When you talk dude, about that Dude, 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 therapy? Yeah. That's why I advocate for it, mm -hmm. because it's helped so, f like, I can't, I can't stress enough, like, therapy is so amazing yeah like like literally the the other day there's this girl that messaged me um she's been struggling with with binge eating um she's on prep and like mm. she just wanted to talk to me because she's like hey i know you've gone through similar stuff and she's from back home um i won't say her name sure. but like she 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 told me she's like i talked to my friends they don't really get it but like i know you would and it's just like i told her i'm like you should stop prep mm. like you should speak to someone immediately about this. Like mm -hmm. this would, I am immensely, I'm an, I'm a massive advocate for therapy and like, mm -hmm. I can't tell you enough what it's done for me and I think it will yeah. monumentally help you. Yeah. And it's just like, I think people are super against that. Like, mm -hmm. like, like I think therapy now is becoming more worldwide. Like yeah. we can, we can, we can do therapy on our phone, like mm -hmm. through an app or a website. Yep. But it's just, I think the idea of actually talking to someone, like you said about yeah. like what you're feeling, like, dude, there would be times like in a therapy session, like I would, I would cry about something that I'm like, fuck, I didn't realize. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. wow, that felt good. Yeah. You know? it does. And, you, and you walk out like lighter on your feet yeah. in a way. And With it's a just different like, perspective it's on so life. weird. Yeah. Man. Like just even talking about, it, like you said, yeah. it's just, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely so like that. This leads me to like one of my segment points that we were talking about, like some practical things. That's people. what we call a transition. That's what we call a transitioner. Okay, guy, good job, Rico. 
the uh, so like practical things like people with anxiety, depression, or like some sort of mental illness can do is like one like like we talked about therapy. Like therapy is huge, man. Like therapy has changed my life. It's changed your life. Um, that's just one type of therapy. Like, why do you advocate? Why would you advocate for therapy as opposed to like talking to your because best it because it, it takes you out of your comfort zone. One, okay. Two, it's it's someone neutral, so it's not like it's not like yeah. somebody who is involved with your life daily. Yep. You're not seeing them every day, right? It's some. It's literally you can take yourself away from a situation and analyze it and talk about it and get feedback, unbiased feedback, right? Um, and it's huge. And, and just talking your words out loud and like you said, like when you hear something, you might get emotional from it and then they can analyze. So you're like, well, what about that makes you emotional? You get even, like deeper, like inception. <laughs> like, it's it, crazy. It, it's crazy. I remember, I remember in therapy sometimes, like she would write notes mm -hmm. as to like something or she would like circle it. Yeah. And I'm like, and I would like, <laughs> and I was on a, and I think this was deliberate. Yeah, I was yeah. on a couch that was lower than the desk. Uh, okay. So I couldn't see what she was circling, but I'm like, <laughs> What are we drawing over there? Are you we, got a doodling? Are we drawing conclusions <laughs> about Rico? I'm like, what are like we crazy? I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, dude, that's but like, hilarious. Um, yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. Um, I mean, some other things. So, let's say someone, let's say someone tries therapy, doesn't work out for them, which is totally okay. Like, as long as you try, awesome. Doesn't work, that's fine. What's something else you might suggest? Are we talking about therapy doesn't work because let's just, just say let's just say they've tried therapy and whether it's not a good fit with the therapist, which you can always try on someone else. So let's say it's like that just doesn't vibe with them. Maybe that doesn't actually help them. Like, what's another method you would maybe that's helped you? Um, so <clears throat> there's been times when the gym has helped and has not helped. Mm. Right. There's been times when. Uh, <laughs> Nutrition has helped and nutrition has not helped. Yeah. Like I've had times where it's like, like I said, you can go to, I, 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 and I, again, I think people who are where they're at in life in terms of like people who understand balance with things have gone through times, like Jordan says, of imbalance and have gone through extremes. Mm -hmm. Like sitting at my bathtub spitting food out. Mm -hmm. Like that's a fucking extreme. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's, there's also times where it's like tracking my macros has given me a sense of control and purpose and mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm doing good. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's just like, that's also a healthy thing, but it can also be not healthy. Yep. Um, there's also times when the gym has been healthy for me and like, I've, I've also done intermittent fasting mm -hmm. extremely bad. Mm -hmm. Like I would do 40 hour fasts because I had to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. um, that's not healthy. Yep. There's times when it's like the gym is healthy where it's like, oh, I, I'm chasing uh, a weight I wanna lift. I'm chasing something I wanna like, mm -hmm. uh, an aesthetic, a physique, or something like. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's healthy, yeah. but I also think it can be detrimental when you're using it as a punishment. Yep. So I think finding little things in your life like that mm -hmm. that you can really control over. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't have to be something massive, but like if you could just track like a meal, let's say, and like that gives you a sense of like, I'm fucking doing it. Mm -hmm. Like little, little like I'm. Mean, that's just an example, but like sure. little things in your life that like you can build on yeah. that like give you a sense of like accomplishment they give mm -hmm. you a sense of like like you're doing something fucking good yeah and even and also like not not not, e not even you have to do something but like i also i also view this like resting mm -hmm. is doing something yeah like you're resting like people pe people in society like you're resting it's just like why the fuck are you resting you need mm -hmm. to be fucking doing something like no resting is also doing something right so i think doing something is always better than nothing but right. also be understand that like whatever you're doing Make sure that it's moving you forward. Yeah. But if it moves you backwards, don't fucking beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. Beat yourself up over it. Right. Keep moving forward. Absolutely. So I it's like that for me. Just finding little things in your life that like give you purpose, or like yeah. picking up a new hobby, like yeah. finding something new that you like. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it's easier said than done. Absolutely. And I think, I think you brought up the gym. So like, I think moving. I, I think a lot of people who are depressed, like you hear stories, people who just lay in bed all day, right? Like sometimes you just gotta move. Just walking, right? Just walk. Um, but I, I, it's interesting you bring up that point because uh, I've talked about that with my therapist before too. Is is the gym? My I've been going to the gym since I was thirteen, so it's almost like um, such. It's been such a stimulus in my life that it no longer makes me feel good or takes away my pain, right? So like it's it's when you get that constant stimulus, constant stimulus. It's like. It sometimes, if I feel anxiety, it just gives me more anxiety. Yeah. You know? um, which I think is it's important to recognize yeah. that body awareness, that mental awareness of like, this isn't doing any, me any good right now. 
right? So maybe removing yourself from that situation. But, you know, sometimes move yourself is the best thing. Go for a walk, go to the gym, whatever. If it doesn't help, something else. Like something I've done in the past is journal, right? Like you have a journal here. But but I will say journaling for me, mm-hmm. I like th- that that's a, I should have been clarified when that. Yeah, like yeah. that's a journal where I just like I just have notes of stuff. I don't actually yeah, yeah. Like, write about what I'm going through because sure. journaling for me doesn't help. Okay. Like talking for enough. me helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I think you need to find what your communication is. Yeah. You know? That's and yeah, it's it's your communication. So whether your communication is is moving your body, whether it is journaling, whether it's talking to someone, whether it is writing music, right, poetry, like something where you can put your emotion somewhere and see it. A form of and, expression. Yeah, it's expression. Um, that's that's basically what it comes down to. Obviously, you know, there's the things that people recommend as far as therapy, meditation, journaling. Um, but you got to find what works for you, right? That's at the end of the day. That's what that that's it. <laughs> that's literally it. One hundred percent. One hundred percent emoji. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get into some of the Q and A questions that I got from Instagram at Body Brain Fitness at Rico dot com dot com. <laughs> oh, there's a there's a domain to this now. Yeah, it's mine. You want to buy it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How much you selling it for? And none yet. Okay, so from Amy Rudolph. <sighs> Amy Rudolph. By the way, Amy. We amazing, love you. Amazing human being. Yeah, Continue. we love you, Amy. Okay, so Amy asks. So Amy oh, has a co- yeah, Amy has three, three questions. Wow. Amy's the awesome. What made you decide to seek outside help? So we kind of went over this. We did go over that, yeah. Um, which you guys know, but uh, it's basically like pressure built up, and it was you have two forks in the road, this or that. We both chose that, thank God. Um, what is? <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's like you know when things built up. I think that's what most people go through. It and I th- like I said, I think you have to go through an extreme. To really reel you back in, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like you gotta, like you gotta kind of test. And, and, and again, I, I am not advocating that. Yeah. But what I'm advocating is that like, you go be proactive about stuff. Mm-hmm. Like don't ever let it get to a point of awful. The extreme, like like yeah. don't don't ever don't ever let it get to the extreme. Right. But I think the best the, the best teachers or people that have like gone through shit have mm-hmm. also gone through extremes, yeah. and that's why they can. That's why they're such great resources. Yeah. Like. I'm sure therapists have been through shit too. Yeah. And it's just like, that's why they're probably the most helpful people because they've absolutely. been through shit. And it's like, yeah. they don't want you to go to the extreme. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a good question. Did you get any pushback from family or friends from seeking help? 100%. Yeah? Yep. Um, that's why I, like, like much like you said, where family is not so much standoffish to it, but you are, you internalize a lot. Mm-hmm. And you kind of think that, oh, well, I can't even bother, I can't even bother to tell my father about this because like, this is not normal. Mm. Um, however, my dad, I, I got him to see a therapist uh, ah, about his, that's awesome. which is cool. Um, but I think in the beginning that's he huge. was he was very against it because it's just like he he looked at it like, well, this is my son. Why mm. is my son not okay? Mm. Yes, dude. Yeah. Like it that's was so it was this, it was a sense of pride of yeah. like why is my son not okay? Like yeah. I am doing everything I can to make sure he's okay. Yeah. But it's like. I understand that. Yeah. However, you can't protect me from everything. No. I need to go. I need to touch the stove to know that it's hot. Yeah. To know to not fucking touch it again. Yeah. Like you can't protect me from that. Yeah. In a sense, like, like I, I, I love my father. Yeah. Right. Like I'm not, I'm not negating any of that. But what I'm saying is, like, there's, and what bothered me was like when he kind of took the blame, mm. in a sense of like, well, well, why are you feeling like this? Like, yeah. What, 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 what can I do? Like. Yeah. It, sometimes it's not it's not a matter of like what you can do it's more of like what actually what you can do is just under, just support me through this yeah, that's, it. That's, that's it. it that's it that's dude. it so anything that if there is pushback yes yeah. um, and I think how to deal with that mm-hmm. um, is just understanding you know what you're doing and that it's best for you and that you're just trying to better yourself that's called mm-hmm. a toima and we go ahead and reset that <laughs> um, yeah so for me I guess any pushback was um not so much pushback for going to seek help. I mean, not not. I should say that my mom definitely was for me going to therapy. My dad and the parents very similar. Was like, well, why don't you just talk to me or like, you right. know? Right. Yep. Um, and it's very like it's like well, you know, the therapy I'm going to, I'm kind of gonna be talking about you. <laughs> you know, it's like, and it's hard for me. Like if we don't have an open relationship about like that, it's it's hard to just dive into it. Um, 
and like and I can only imagine like from a parent's perspective of like my child is in he's hurting he or she's hurting and like what can I do to do it and like sometimes like you can't like you mm-hmm. just need to like you said support them yeah. um, and like for me that was like the biggest thing is like same thing like from, I told my mom I, I have anxiety and she's like well what, what gives you she goes like what gives you anxiety like you know she's trying to like ask him specific <laughs> yeah, things yeah, yeah. and I'm just like I, I don't know like sometimes I just feel it and she and it's very hard for her to understand because like it's it's hard for people to understand what anxiety is it's like you know it could be anything whatever form but like um, it's just hard for someone to wrap their head around like well what's causing it how can we fix it you know it's like sometimes I, you can't sometimes I, I, you yeah. just gotta learn to live with it and yep. like that's the best thing you could do yep um so yeah, that's kind of like, and, and yeah, so that's like any pushback I've had. Um, how did you figure out what you were going through was more than just a passing mood for me, Amy? Wow. You're right? That's a big one. I'm and gonna, that's a really I'm gonna let you take thing. this one first. Um, so for me, it was, so I think that's an awesome question because obviously I think, I think that's very common today too. It's like someone might be like, I'm depressed, but like it's a day or a week, right? But I think you distinguish a passing mood to chronic, right? So for me, it was like two years of my life had gone by and I was in a fog. Like I was just in a fog and like I was depressed and anxious and like that's two years. It's like two years of life you're not getting back. So it's like, how do you determine it's not a passing mood? Um, I guess that's kind of how, like duration of time, I guess would be it. Intensity, definitely for sure. Yep. Um, you want to look at like externally what's going on in your life. Is it temporary? Is it a big situation? Like, um, and you want to look at, I guess, like how you've acted in the past to like how you act now. Um, what do you think about that? I would distinguish it as, so I think there's good and bad anxiety. Mm-hmm. I think, so the most recent example that I can give that will help a lot, that a lot of people would understand um, is, and again, this is, this was good anxiety for me. Yeah. And in terms of it being either a just a, a passing mood or like something I'm actually going through, is so for example, like the Big Mac challenge we did, mm-hmm. I was super anxious about that, mm-hmm. but in a good way. Yeah. I was, and and that wasn't just like oh it's just like a moment. No, I was anxious about it like like when like it was towards the end of the challenge, and in my mind, like as a creative person, I'm like. How am I gonna put this all together? Mm-hmm. Like, what's this gonna look like? And and this is this isn't like anything from like slowing me down. Yeah. This is like I want I am so excited for people to see this mm-hmm. that like I want this to be the best thing yeah. that I can. And it's just example of good anxiety. Right. Th- yeah. That that's what gave me anxiety where I'm like, okay, fuck, I don't know how this is gonna be. Like, mm-hmm. it's just versus versus if there's something in the present day mm-hmm. that like let's say I'm going to the gym and I'm anxious about like how many people are at the gym Mm -hmm. because I'm like, am I going to be able to do a squat today? Am I going to be able to like, am I going to be able to like get out on time? Cause I have like this fuse in the gym of like, all right, I got to get out. You know what I mean? Um, that's just like a mood that, Mm -hmm. that, that's just like a a short thing and I can deal with that quickly. Um, but yeah, that's just like a Mm -hmm. good anxiety for me. Um, and I I think it's important too. like what my therapist will say is, um, anxiety is kind of like when your fight or flight, fight or flight response is like always turned on. Right, so it's like somebody who is an overactive amygdala, um, they might just be always alert, right? And and it could just be like anxiety could be for them could be like anti- anticipatory anxiety. So like so, imagine an event that hasn't even happened yet, and it gives you anxiety over it, right? Like that's that was super common for me. And but like it could have ended up being a good situation. That's right? why that's why I would go to the lake in, yeah. in college because I didn't want to be like. Fuck, one of my roommates there, he's gonna be there with his girlfriend and I'm yeah, not gonna have yeah. time to myself. Right. And you're going through all these scenarios. He, he could be he could be anywhere else. <laughs> right. But that's what I'm thinking about. Might not even be home. <laughs> he, might not even be home. he could be elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just yeah. like, yeah. So yeah. there's there's different forms of anxiety. So you that's I guess that's how you would tell. Um, this is from Vinny the cheeseburger effect guy. Man. How how have you overcome those low points in your lives? Um uh, Jordan Sly just walked away. Like, should have acknowledged that. Oh my God! I, I can't say. I can't not say. That. Um, how how you've overcome those low points in your life? Are you freezing on the camera? Um, <laughs> yeah. How have you? So how have you overcome like low points in your life? Therapy helped with that a lot. Yeah. Um, but I also think having a good group of people around you has helped a ton. Yep. Um, I'm trying to frame this properly. Um, there's 
there's a lot of moments where it's 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 a matter of like I'm trying to I'm trying to say this the right way. Um, like I said, ther- therapy has helped a lot, mm-hmm. and it's understanding whether or not like like I said, you have control over those points. Yeah. Um, for me, a low point, a, a super low point is again like attempting suicide. Like yeah. that's a low point. <laughs> How do you how do you get through it? I think like anything else in life, you just understand like I need to be here. Mm-hmm. Like I need to I need to be here right now. Um, and and I, I, I still go I, I still go through low points today, but they don't they aren't as magnified. Mm. That's what's that's what's different. Like yeah. from today, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they're not as magnified as like what they were. Yeah. And that's why I can I think I can like if I am going through something, yeah. I can diffuse it immediately right. because I understand like. Enrico, this does not need to be something bigger than what it actually is. It doesn't feel like the end of the world. It's well, like, well, yeah. not, not even just that, but like it, it doesn't need <clears throat> it doesn't need to slow me down. Right. Because it's like you're gonna be okay. Like yeah. everything's gonna be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think you? for me it's just like you kind of just keep fucking going, right? Like you, you have to. So like at this point in my life, I'm able to look back and see like I think again reference my therapist again, but like she references like she so so she'll frame the question like this like. If you look back on all the low points in your life, all mm-hmm. the challenges you've been through, yep. Every time you've done that, have you come out better on the on the other side of it? And it's like, well, yeah, I fucking I'm a better person because of it. So it's like when you go through low points in life, you need to understand like they're temporary, and they might last a certain duration, but like you're you're always gonna learn something from it, and I think you can always be better. I always also look at a low point as a, as a time in my life where I could have done a little bit better in handling a situation. Mm -hmm. And I look at that as like, what can I learn from that? Mm -hmm. What can I learn from that to maybe diffuse that situation even faster and not allow like emotion to take over from that and like dictate my action moving forward. Mm -hmm. Love it. All right. Let's keep this party going. Kim Schlag fitness, go Kimmy. What could your parents have done differently, wow. more of, less of, to help with your mental health? Wow, yeah. that's deep. Yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> wow, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for I think I think what parents, like we said, I think what yep. parents tend to feel is this burden that like it's their fault. Mm-hmm. And similarly to kids who have gone through divorce, that they feel like the divorce is their fault. Yeah. And they put that blame on themselves, and it's like yeah. as a parent, I think. I think just supporting your kid mm-hmm. through that or your child and not and not like not being like, well, you have anxiety. Well, why the fuck are you anxious? Yeah. Like, what's making you anxious? Like, mm-hmm. that's going to create more anxiety. Yeah. Just understand, like, okay, what can I do to help you then? Mm-hmm. Like, what can we do to work on this? Right. To help, like, and, and, and don't make it like a, like a, well, you're anxious. Like, this is a problem yeah. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, like, no, yeah. like, we're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. Yeah. It's just... I want you to know that I'm here for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's just be just being another like support system. And mm-hmm. e- even even if like you know what I can't I really can't talk to you about this. I'd prefer to talk to a therapist. But like mm-hmm. just that you're in their corner. Yeah. That's it. And I think to go along with that is uh, just let them know you're there for them. Nope. Right. That's sometimes the only thing you need. Someone needs to hear is like, hey, I'm here for you. Like in this moment, I'm here for you. In future moments, I'm here for you. And it's not don't turn it into a lecture right so don't turn it into like well you know you know you could feel better by doing this 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 it's like i my parents have done that i immediately tune them out and i'm i'm out like i'm out of that conversation Th- that that's another thing too like my my brothers right now they they're going through a divorce mm-hmm. um like i had said and something that i've been trying to do is not take on a parental role mm-hmm. is just try to take on a hey I love you and I'm fucking here for you. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not gonna shove it down your throat like talk to me. Like tell me what's going wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, like if something's going if something's wrong, like I, they know I'm here. Yeah. I'm not gonna I, I and I just want them to know that like I've been through that, yeah. like divorce, and just mm-hmm. knowing that like I'm here for them. Mm-hmm. That's that's literally that that if if I had a brother, like an older brother, that's all I'd want. And like so, I'm not trying you know what I mean? Yeah. You just want at the end of it, you just want to know if someone's there for you, and you can talk to them if you need to. Yep. I think that's it. Um, your advice for speaking to friends that are struggling with depression. <clears throat> I guess kind of similar thing. I, I yeah, I would say the same thing. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, yeah, I, I would. I would advocate the same thing. Yeah. I, and like I said, and I think it's it's important to say like let's say like somebody's already reaching out to you and they're saying like. You know, I'm just not feeling the best. And, and I think a lot of people say, like, well, you know, I'm here for you. 
But I think, like, if you're already having that conversation, like, if you're already in it, just be like, hey, I'm here for you in this moment. Like, like what's up, you know? But I, I also, with this, um, I think there's a stigma attached to when people are like, like, you know, you can talk to me whenever. Yeah. But the person who you say, you're saying that to will, will sometimes feel this burden yeah. when you're like, well, I actually need you right now, but right. like I feel burdened to talk to you because right. like you seem busy or you right. seem, and it's a story that we create in our head when it's like, just ask. Yep. Like, and, 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 and if you're gonna be that person for them, to be there for them, be there. Yeah. Don't be like this one foot wish in, you, one foot out. Yeah, don't, don't be half pregnant with it, no. Like, be there for them then. Mm -hmm. Like, don't be like, oh, well, I'm here for you exclusively. No, no, no. If you're gonna commit to that, then fucking commit to that. Yeah. Because then otherwise you're just, you're giving, you know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Um, this is a good one. So this is a, almost a, like a debate one, because this is something we've talked about on, um, on Instagram, sort of. So this question is by NM underscore Beats. How do we bring light to mental health but stop making it trendy to have an illness? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Start with that one. It's um, a good one. That is a good one. So, so the question was, how do we bring light to mental health but stop making it trendy to have an illness? Interesting, yeah, that's a very good one. Um, so personally, uh, I mean, you bring a help, light to my health by just talking about it. So like when I go to my therapy sessions, I say I'm going to therapy, coming out of therapy, like to sort of just bring light that it's okay. Let's let, let's also give context as to like sure. So w w when when because so, someone listening, they're probably like, well, what do they mean by someone's making it a trendy thing? Yeah. Because like, someone's like, well, I don't think my mental health is a trendy thing. Yeah. W what is what do you, in, in terms of that, I, I know what that means, but yeah, like, yeah. what? A, how can we frame that to where people are going to have more context? I guess, I mean, what's the trend? Like, dressing up as a hipster <laughs> is like cool, like the cool thing to say you have, right? Right, so what do you think is the trendy way for mental health then? I guess, like, I mean, and I, I would say, like, uh, something I've heard too is like, you, you, you've seen the show 13 Reasons Why? Yep how they kind of bring light to like suicide and all that. Yeah. So I, I did hear like some people were saying like, oh, like, you know, more people are, are saying they have mental health stuff all like that. Um, but I would say maybe they're saying it just to get attention um, in that aspect instead of actually maybe having it. But I think it's it's a tricky thing. Um, yeah, and I, and I think there's a fine line with doing something for the attention like that where it's where it's like this it's 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 such a touchy subject though because it's like there's that you you don't actually know you don't, you don't. really you don't yeah. really know but like giving the benefit of the doubt with mm -hmm. like I I I know I know exactly what that is and that's why it's like it's it's a touchy thing because Here, here's what I think about it being trendy so I would I would rather have it be and I'm using quotations <laughs> trendy yep. and talked about than the opposite. Yep. That's just my opinion on it. Um, but, I mean, I th and I think you like that. And the, the reason it's you bring light to it is it, it could become a trend, right? Like, but I also think that it weeds out the people who are perceivably doing it as a trend mm -hmm. and the people who actually fucking mean it. Sure. Like, you notice it when, you, you, know, you know when it's a trend, when it's World Mental Health Day and yep. everybody wants to talk about it? Yeah. But the day after, nobody gives a fuck. Yep. So ed education. No, no, no. Yeah. Mental health is 365. Yeah. Not one day a year. Mm -hmm. Just because it's World Mental Health Month. Right. I don't want you showing up for 30 days. If right. you're going to show up, show up for 365. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's I how you make it not trendy. That's how you make it like lasting. That's why mm -hmm. everyone needs to talk about it. And if you make it trendy, it's just like this. If you make it trendy, it becomes a hashtag for a fucking day. Right. World Mental Health Day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then where does everybody go? Right. Yeah. They're quiet. Yeah. I think I think you bring light to it just by educating it. So it's like, yep, these are the symptoms. And like this is what I go through. And going off of um, Megan's question, where she yeah. said, "Your advice for speaking to friends, mm -hmm. it comes from education." Yeah. Because then you can you you know how to speak to them. You know yeah. how to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Like, education is the base for everything. Yeah. Like then 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 you know how to be a better friend to them. Mm -hmm. Like you know how to guide them to a therapist. Yeah. Like. Should we ask this guy? This is an Enrico Ryan podcast. <laughs> see, you, see you later. Uh, all right, we got one more question. This is from Rose Spector. How do you find a qualified professional? What should you look for? Um, my biggest, my quick answer is Google. There's mm -hmm. psychology. I think it's psychology today. Mm -hmm. um, 
you could that 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 girl I mentioned about that's I sent her that website. She mm-hmm. found someone booked an appointment awesome. that day, and yeah. it's like, it's that quick. Like, yeah. don't overthink it. Mm-hmm. Like, literally look online. Be like psychologist or therapist near me psychologist right. near me and like oftentimes you can find specialized people for like whatever you're struggling yeah. with and it's yeah. like it's that easy and I think um, so I, I, I got mine from recommendations from my mom um, people have gotten recommendations from me or same thing I'll say, I'll say you know just look up someone in your area um, and what should you look for I think one you want to be comfortable with the person or but I think that comes with trial and error like you that does to, come with you, it you have to go first yeah absolutely and so and you might not find therapists you like on the first try. I think that's that's important to say too. Is um, you might have to go through a few. Just like you know, if you date someone, you might not marry them on the first date, right? So, same thing with your therapist. So, you, what you also want to look for is like, what what do you need a therapist for? Is it couples counseling? Look for a therapist that specializes in couples counseling, right? Is it behavioral therapy, which is what I go for? Is is it something where you need to change your habits, your behavior? Um, specialist type of the deal like then look for a behavioral therapist um if you're looking for like like something specific then you want to look for that but you need to just go and try a therapist instead of just waiting and not doing anything and not acting on it right i think that's the most important thing that's i think that's the most important thing action is better than inaction right always action is always better than action and you need to just try to see if the therapist fits you um that's that's the questions, man. Damn. I think that's the podcast. That was a good. That was a, uh, as we'd say in the business, a long episode. <laughs> <laughs> this a long episode. That was good though. That was very good. Um, so thank you for being on this podcast. How many episodes have you done? This is number two. <laughs> Wham! We're coming out strong with the I'm, second I'm episode. I'm a little hurt that I'm not number one. <laughs> number one's fine. just me. <laughs> I'm fine. Got it. Wow, I'm number. Dude, I'm the first guest. He was number two. You are the first guest. Dude, I'm. You are the first wham. guest. Wow. Um, so thank you guys for listening and for watching this podcast. Super appreciate Wait, where it. We, where are we putting this? This is gonna go on my YouTube channel. Wow. Ryan Cassim. <laughs> Um, you could find Rico at uh, Rico dot on Instagram, Instagram, um, Twitter. Yep, that's it. TikTok. Um, I think it's Rico and Carnati. <laughs> <laughs> it's something. It's something. Um, but yeah, we want to thank you guys for listening to this. Um, we are super appreciative. We would like to say that we're not therapists. We're not anything like that. This is just all coming from our experience. One hundred percent. And I think that's a very <clears throat> important thing to distinguish. Is that like, mm-hmm. hey, this is just our experience. Yep. And I th- and I think people. They understand that, sure. um, but also that's just a big disclaimer to make that like, hey, we're not therapists. We're just sharing our experiences, and we mm-hmm. promote seeing a therapist first yeah, of all. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's our podcast on mental health. We super appreciate you guys listening and watching. Uh, we love you, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening to these little moments podcast. And what Ryan failed to say that I'm going to close out is please leave a rating and review Ooh, on the podcast. Yes, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Five stars, Don Don. Yeah, five. St- Five star podcast. Five star podcast. Um, thank you guys. Thank we you love guys. you. And we'll see you later. Bye.